after it didn't solve their problem, they tunnel vision so much into boosting this Luna that they forgot how to get right. Luna farmed. And to be fair, we were talking about how they probably shouldn't put that doom mid. Yeah. And they did. Storm had a great game. Like he felt no pressure whatsoever. He farmed, he got all the runes. Mm -hmm. He could make whatever rotation he wanted. Even if his first rotation failed, it didn't matter. He had like all the options in the world that game. In fairness, I, I did say I did want them to put the Doom mid, and that's what you get for listening to me. You lose. <laughs> no, but I, I wonder if that Doom mid happened as a consequence of them picking Juggernaut, and then they were like, okay, let's just pick a Beastmaster and deal with this. And the Beastmaster didn't even deal with the Juggernaut. The Juggernaut actually no. got like two or three kills on him it's, off lane. It's so. really bad against Storm. Beastmaster. Like he could not split push after 14 minutes into the game because he was so afraid that he was just going to get picked off. Yeah. I think that Beastmaster was just a reactionary pick and they should have just gone with their initial game plan, whatever it was that they had in mind. But I don't think that initially it was a mid doom when they did pick it up. Oh, someone Ooh. steals the Lena. We'll go to Elephant. Here it is. And Vichy do get the Dragon Knight this time. I wonder if we'll see a timber possibly coming out here that would be a pretty good like counter to this dragon i pick um i like timber a lot so in my my theory with timber and dk we saw it be banned earlier is like they're literally the same heroes in the sense that you go to the off lane you sit there with your passive and your plus hp regen you hit level three then your position four leaves you and they those two are the only off laners in the whole game that can do that and that's what makes them so good. And then they can take towers Fair. too. Yeah, agreed. Um, Ancient Apparition is a very strong hero that seems to have been forgotten about Ten this tournament. And he actually does come out and it, it's nice to see him get some more playtime after virtually remaining. disappearing off the face of the earth for a few days. Uh, a is obviously very good against Dragon Knight because of his ulti. This is really yep. weird because Elephant never picked something like this in the first phase. And seeing these two heroes, I think this is them trying to take heroes away from BG. Because mm -hmm. when yeah. you pick a Dragonite, you like Lina with it. When you pick Dragonite, you like Apparition with it. And they literally just like stole it from BG. And BG get hoodwinked anyway. So it, I'm a little bit worried actually for what Elephant just did with his first two phase picks. They're picking like two potential range support heroes. They're, they need to pick like three stunners in the next three picks, essentially, to make up for this high damage burst two picks that they made. Yeah, They're also did. very squishy, Five seconds remaining. which yeah. is concerning to have such easy to kill heroes. They the really haven't game. been picking AA, have they? On uh, on elephant, like this is not an elephant hero at all. They had they have they've just even when it was popular, they, it's not something they've really played with. So. Very interesting to see them picking it up now when it's uh, not been so popular in this tournament as of yet. We definitely should be saying some kind of um, safe lane combo with him, otherwise it doesn't really solicit this pick. I mean, it is great versus Dragon Knight, but it does need mm -hmm. something more. AA is a hero that needs to be enabled by its team. It needs people that are ready to move around the map and fight and make use of that ulti every time it's off cooldown. What do we want to see, though? I, I think uh, Sanking, Mars, anything in that range would be perfect for Elephant to uh, support their these first two picks that they've made. And VG just banned like Mars. Mars. It's gone. I do like Mars it's banned. Not, yeah. It's gone. <laughs> yeah. I, I was going to say, Mars is a great here. And we haven't seen that hero at all this tournament, and I mm -hmm. kind of miss it. But yeah. he's also just very good against Headwing because he can yeah. cut down all the trees of the arena. I think BG are onto on. them. BG understand that Elephant are in yeah. a little bit of a pickle right now, and there's only a very few heroes that can round out their lineup with that kind of opening. You know, they they especially with that Mars. Like you said, nobody else has picked this hero yet in this tournament, so it's not something that's on anybody's radar, but. VG, you know, they realize that this is what's going to make up for remaining. what they're lacking. Mm -hmm. So I think we might even see a Sand King ban. Radiant team ban. Yep, yep. Sand King's up there. Tide, Centaur, Luna ban. Okay. okay. So this kind of makes sense because Elephant are picking out of the phase here, the ban phase. And VG, they obviously don't want to be 
uh, giving up the best carry, especially after Terrorblade being banned out by Elephant himself. Yeah. I wonder if Elephant would go for Wraith King. Or I was thinking the exact same not, thing. <laughs> yeah. Or is this hero just got not a stun? popular in China? <laughs> I think so it's nice possible. It's, it's not even it's that bad. It's durable and it combos with AA, which is something that you want to do on lane to make AA even stronger, right? But I, I have not seen this hero played in China for quite some time. But it's one of the most popular picks every time an AA draft comes out in Europe. Faces I mean, that was an R for... That's four to one, one on Wraith King in this patch so far. So it's 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 very possible they pick it. Well, let's wait and see. Indeed, indeed. Have you guys what ever you played want? a game where you just had like no stuns in your team and in a pub game? Yes. And how does how does that make you feel? It doesn't feel great, but sometimes I win, surprisingly. Okay. If you know those magical <laughs> no sun games that you win and you're like, whoa, am I OG? Yeah, but normally when that happens, you have like four healers or something in your team, right? And you just like yeah, steamroll yeah. everyone. <laughs> yeah, you just turn them over. <laughs> yeah. Just buy bashes yeah, and Atos, it's easy. That, that's, that's the thing I hate the most in pubs, I think. Like, I don't care what you pick. If you pick a stun, at least I can play with you, right? <laughs> like, you can win MMR, guys. Okay, just by picking a stunner. That's true. That's true. Like you can literally All hit. You can go to five k MMR just playing a stunner every game. I, I'm not even. I joking actually you. agree with that, right. and I advocate for that. And you can fail the whole game, get one good stun off, turn a team fight around, and win. Even if you've been feeding the whole game. So stuns it's are true. cool. I feel like we've talked about all of these heroes, with the exception of AA, so many times that we're just sitting here like, what are they picking next? <laughs> and we're just waiting for the next pick. You know, you know why Nomad is so quiet right now, Mira? Because he never picks stuns. So he has nothing to say in this conversation. No, 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 nothing you know? to say. <laughs> I have nothing to add, no. How well, hard do you know? Luna's a stun. Spirit. Listen, I, when, I was thinking about Earth Spirit. I was like, okay. They've got these really squishy mm -hmm. two heroes. You were saying they need a stunner, and I was talking about how it needs someone who's always ready to fight, mm -hmm. make use of that A ulti. Boom, Earth Spirit. Earth Spirit ticks all those boxes very well. What Earth Spirit does need, though, is either a strong lane partner or a lane partner who can stand by himself so that he can ro roam around the map. Or True. someone to play with on lane, like a Viper. But we don't really want to see a Viper or something like that. So. They're either going to go for this like self-sufficient uh, off laner or a safe laner with kill potential with their spirit, and they might just end up try laning. They'll need more stuns though. This is not going to be enough yeah. for them. And the earth spirit also means Lena is hundred percent locked into the mid roll. I mean, we probably would have guessed that for the most part. And they're okay. They're going to go with the tide pick. So that is a big stun, a really big and one. That's a, a that's a, that's an off laner you can leave by itself and just yep. go play. I would really like to see this Wraith King come out, actually. And this AA Earth Spirit Wraith King Trilane can get so many kills. Can we see an Ursa here? Or like, I guess Slark is not good against Apparition, right? I'm, I'm just trying to think of what hero is going to dominate this Tidehunter and can still carry the game regardless of what the last carry is. I, I, Ursa is the one that's coming to mind right I now think, for BG. I think... I think do we like monkey king it's no we there? do not like no, monkey no, king no 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 no, no. no, no. no, no. what <laughs> ah clinks of course clinks oh. does very well against tidehunter assuming it is a safe link clinks but this hero will die to earth spirit with a dust oh my god that clinks i mean the thing about Ten chinese dota they love to pick Invis heroes against Apparition. I know that since 2012. Um, just talking with them, they're like, oh, we always like Invis heroes or like Darkseer or something that can just uh, push the lane in or find them and kill them in the fights. So I think mm -hmm. that's where they're going with this clinks just to be able to hunt. And this Clockwork is going to have so much value now. For sure. Right? But also Tidehunter will struggle in the lane. Yeah. Clinks. You got yeah. that plus damage. Clinks is just going to shred him, basically. But the thing is, there is kill, kill potential on this Clinks later in the game. But they, they did pick a hero that you said who could lane against Tide. Not what I thought, though. <laughs> Me neither, but I like it. New hero. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs>
Five We're seconds. staying a lot of new heroes. Let's go. Just interesting because it's it's not something they've even been playing, so this is clearly something new for them. Hmm. Actually, clockwork. If Earthsphere at Realms, Clock just cogs the tide hunter and then clinks just kills them every time. Yeah, those are facts. So easy. That that well, is. What is what and is poor little tide doing? I guess it kind of makes more sense because they did pick the clock they wanted, like a ranged carry, and uh, Luna Deuce are already gone. I feel Elephant here are gonna go for Spectre. This is my vibes. Like that's the vibes I'm getting from Elephant right now. Spectre. VG Gaming's turn. I like what they're gonna do is they're just gonna blink, ravage just clinks. Spectre's gonna haunt in Manta and kill him, and they're like, oh, there we go. There's the position one dead in like. It's like a sniper, you know? You just mm -hmm. get on him. Radiant that could definitely be a solution here. Oh, that, that, see? Well, I just said Invis Heroes and Darks here <laughs> against A. That's exactly you're, what it is. You're an Oracle. Is this Dota 1? Putting <laughs> Ion Shell on Klingz to just oh, wind walks around goodness. them off? <laughs> I mean, it's good with Clock. It's good against Darks here in the lane. Yeah, I mean, against Apparition in the lane. Team. He can't really do much. So now... They need to pick a carry that can sustain Five against Darks here, but also, also good against Clay. Let's, guys, we forgot to talk about this Clockwork, but this Clockwork can have an excellent game because AA will Sven, die Sven, and Lena Sven, will die to a good hook shot. Sven will be so, the answer, so it's still a carry stuns. with a stun. Mm -hmm. they, they had to pick a stunning safe laner, which left like Wraith King, Sven, or a Chaos Knight. I, I think the Wraith King would have been a little bit like, better. more. Yeah, a little bit better, but at the same time, do you want to play Darkseer versus... I mean, do you want to play Wraith King versus Darkseer? I think uh, Wraith King might have a better time than Sven would. I, I really okay, don't like Sven, this Sven. Sven goes... Sven can flash farm faster than a Wraith True. King, which is probably what they were thinking about when they picked it. But they don't really have... He's easy pickings, though. Like, Clockwork goes in with a hookshot and ion shell, and all you need is, like, a hoodwink sharpshooter yeah. follow-up, and he's just going to die. Ten this clockwork can have an excellent game. Yeah. Like Beachy's draft for me, it's Five looking great. Remaining. I like it a lot. Dream clock and, game. And let it be known that it makes me very sad to root against an Earth Spirit. I hate rooting against Earth Spirit because <laughs> I want to see that hero succeed, but Beachy's draft looks really good. It does look good, but is it good enough for you to uh, put your faith in them, Theban? Wait, if, if faith in the who? Cause I'm I'm in with the clinks here. I think I like You're it. Going with the clinks. I like, yeah, I'm I'm gonna go with the clinks here. I I mainly because I didn't like the Sven last pick. That's the yeah. the yeah. Sven yeah. feels a bit strange, but I think they just wanted that farm speed. I kind of like the Sven, honestly. I know I know you guys are against it, but I think he's got options, especially late game when we're looking at Aghanims and stuff. I think he's got some really interesting tools to get on top of the clinks and maybe cause a bit of chaos. And we'll That's see. Sure. And let's not forget about the Lena factor as well. You know, this hero is a beast. Don't forget about the, the kill potential with AA and Spirit and Sven. That, absolutely I right. Could be a bit of a snowball. BG. All right, I'll go Elephant then. I'll go against the Tide, but let's find out what is going to happen with our commentary duo for this second game in VG you versus Elephant. We'll throw it over to B-Cop and Mofara. Thank you very much. Coming into this game number two, a little bit of the different stuff showing up. Clink, Sven, you know, all-stars of the past. Uh, there was one game during the China DPC in which Clink's was picked by Ehom. It was a very Silar kind of game, and uh, they ended up winning. So, I, I don't know. Based off that, I support some clinks. Very big sample size, of course. <laughs> but uh, also, uh, Sven, I was taking a look, or trying to take a look as quickly as I can. And uh, Eurus has about a 63% win rate with this hero all time. So, pretty good percentages with that. If I'm just going to throw some numbers at you and pretend like I knew them the entire time. Uh, it's basically... It you know, looks good. As a, um, a connoisseur for new heroes this tournament, as I said before with the Night Stalker, got to go with the clicks, you know? New hero gets yeah, picked up. Didn't all didn't the work eggs out in the for basket. Last time. It, it works. Don't just don't look at the result. It'll be fine. So, honestly, but it's, it's, okay. also, it's also new hero Sven. Yeah, but that hero's that... not new. It... Don't, don't kid yourself. It's just, it was there for ages. It was there for ages. <laughs> <laughs> it's also a new hero, uh, Ancient Apparition. Of course. Dear, oh dear. I can't, yeah. I can't gamble against the Ancient Apparition. I just can't. So I don't, <laughs> I don't have it in me. My, it might his first item, he'll win my heart. 
I uh, I don't mind the Sven pick though. I, I know they were saying. I, I agree with them in the laning stage, especially. It can uh, struggle a little bit, right, up against this dark say, clock. It can get on top. You get on top of it really easily with the hook shot and whatever. Um, mm. But I think later on, as the game goes on, obviously this Darks here likes playing against these like agi um, heroes carries, right? Like where you could get to wall them and you get the free illusion and everything. Sven doesn't really have that same appeal, um, which yeah. is quite nice. And I think the war cry, obviously being really good against the clinks as well, uh, is going to be helpful. So uh, I, I definitely favor um, Vici's draft. I can I can see the appeal for the Sven. It works well with the AA. I just I, I think that that lane's going to be very volatile. The um, the Sven AA against the Dark Sea Clock, and it we you know if someone gets their level two quicker than the other by a decent margin, I think we'll see that come into effect. Can the leaning of Sven AA be enough? Where like you have that stun and cold feet combo that it w has been deadly in the past. Yeah, I mean, they can. It's just... Again, that that clock dark seal is so potent, though, right? 30 seconds to battle. Hmm. Oh, checking for wards. Oh. Always checking for wards. Who put those that ward down first on both teams? I didn't actually see, but... Uh, they went down at about the same time. I think the radiant one went down a second earlier. Okay. No, oh, no. And uh, three for one in bounties. Meanwhile, those super caught. And these supports will gather first blood. DY will get credit for it. Uh oh. PYW hit with the boulder smash. LSA comes in. Well placed. Bushwhack, though, from DY. Oh, Somnus can't get the kill. Oh, that's so good as well because it gives the DK a nice start to the lane. You know, he's going to get basically a free first wave. I say that his range scoop gets denied. That's uh, really top quality commentary there by me. <laughs> Only the best. Yeah. Nice D ward, though. The DK's going to get that. Level two at a nice time. Not surprised you'd uh, give us that top-notch commentary right there. PYW getting run down a little bit. The last tower shot will be the killing blow. Yeah, now this is the problem, right? Now they're about to hit their level two. This is what I was saying. And all of a sudden you have the uh, sun, you know, cold feet with the chilling touch. There's a lot right, more right. damage coming through at the level two mark. Like you see, Darks is just hiding because he can't come and see us at the moment. Uh, Salve's up. I mean, it's a little bit tough for him. He's going bottle on this uh, Darkseer. We've seen Darkseer with a, a soul ring. The offlane bottle in China was very popular during the, the DPC. I'm a little bit curious as to why that kind of fell off. It seemed like every offlaner in China was getting bottle. Yeah, not 100% sure. I mean, I, I think Dark so bottle is really good, right? Because mm -hmm. then when your four inevitably feeds in pubs as well, you can just tell them to refill your bottle when they TP back in. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Yeah. If you're going to feed, if you're going to be bad at the game, at least, you know, fill my bottle. refill my bottle when you're back, yeah. <laughs> Because it's, it's like a win-win situation, right? You know, if they don't feed, then the lane must be going well. And if they do feed, they you do fill feed. your bottle up. Yeah. Which is super refreshing. Sip on that bottle. Always feels good. Get those electrolytes in. UIW moving over towards Eurus and... We'll push him with those cogs, nothing more. Interested to see how this Lynx is doing. It's currently sitting 15 to 1, so Poyoyo having a time. 
Yank's staying right there with him, though, at 13 and 2. Oh, old 11. Ooh, bottom That's lane, old 11 going down, and it's the Stormhammer coming through with that cold feet. One level in that chilling touch, and you have the damage to get a kill over bottom. Money to burn. Yours is uh, holding a point at the moment. Nice. Yeah, he doesn't want to level the cleave, right? Yeah, you don't want to be pushing the lane any further than it needs to be. And when you play with the AA, I think the second point in stun has a lot of value. Where normally you would go like 1-3-1 one, one or something, right? And you just get the value point. Ooh, there it is again. Stun, cold feet, body look block. for the body blocks. Ooh. He had gotten just well, a fraction of a second longer on the body block. He probably would have killed old 11. Uh, surge too good. Hmm. Yeah, I surge. Do yeah, DK, go for it. I was going to say, DK is one of the heroes that does lane against Lena best. You know, we've seen some some games this tournament where the Lena basically just uh, absolutely crushes the lane, right? I think DK mm -hmm. is, you know, absolutely fine in this matchup. They kind of just trade farm against each other. Yeah, at least Sorry. for the moment. You're not my TPing friend, DK. FY bottom. Stormhammer again, and... Looking like that lack of collision won't matter. You can't get that surge off. And PYW now getting run down. Battery assault with the cold feet. Is he have enough for another chilling touch? He pops the clarity. He's 10 mana short, but the storm hammer will get the kill anyway. So PYW dies, and both these heroes on Vici die bottom. It's a 1k lead for Elephant. Yeah, th this bottom lane is absolutely crushing right now for Elephant. And the tide doesn't really need any help anymore against the clinks, right? Let's see. Yeah, Yang seems to be doing a lot better than I thought he would up in this top lane. Yeah, so he gets so experience, he'll get to a quicker six. He's just about to hit level five, which he will, and he's gotten zero three two. Yeah, well, he feels nice to have that solo experience. You know, we used to see a lot of you know one one fours. And Storm Hammer again, yeah. and they're gonna roll looking for old eleven. He surges. Oh, the chilling touch, and now they're gonna go to the battery assault inside the cogs. They'll help him get out of the cogs and body block PYW, but it's not enough with the ion shell on this clockwork. Yuris has to be careful himself, taking a lot of damage from that ion shell as well as the battery assault. He'll yeah. eat a tango, and that is uh, not the easiest for Elephant to deal with. Yeah, he had the vacuum on the dark side there as well, but couldn't quite get in range to pull the Sven back in. Otherwise, could have potentially been a double kill as well. Oh, that <laughs> ward. <laughs> Very unfortunate. I don't know how long that sentry has left. I don't think it's too long. Two minutes. I think that, yeah, that, oh, yeah, that's the one from the start of the game, right? Mm -hmm. So they might not see it before it, um, the sentry times out. And to be fair, down bottom again. To be fair to the dark side, for all his deaths, he is still level five. Like, he has okay XP still. UIW spotted. Cold feet. Boulder smash. Now trying to get out of the cogs. Stormhammer. Quick kill there. Bushwhack not going to do anything. Be interested to see if Lena rotates bottom now having that Laguna Blade. Guess it's my shout. Well, this is pretty clean so far from Elephant. And again, it's exciting to see... Elephant perform as well as they are considering where they were and considering what we expect. And on top of which, if this can continue into TI, obviously far away, would bring Second five kill. Chinese teams in a big form. They'll get the kill on a super boulder smash out of the tower, but the tower aggro is on the creeps. Yur is getting low. They'll find F fly. That's two now. Make it a third. Old 11 with a double kill. Vici. They hear me saying that Elephant are calling a clean game at the moment, and they shut me up real quick. And this is what I was saying, though. This lane's so volatile. Like, it's, it's like this aggro tri lane now. It's like a tri lane on tri lane action. The, both teams are just leaving the Tide and the Clinks to, like, just 1v1 each other. So. Oh, Fairy Trinket for the Darks here. That's really nice for him. Yeah. I, wonder, I wonder what item build he goes for this game, because obviously mech isn't that great against the AA. I'm assuming pipe will be involved, you know, maybe some like pipe axe build. Right now going arcane boots. Dyer's 
has been killed. Oh no. That's the uh, the Falcon bait for the Klinks disappearing. Feels pretty bad. I mean, you're not bullying this Tide anymore with the Kraken Shell points. He's so unbelievably difficult to deal with. Hmm? Look at mid. TP's are plenty from Vici. Yeah, good stun by the DK. Stops the LSA coming through. Otherwise, he's for sure dead there. LSA Laguna Blade, Darkseer on the run. Somnus vacuum back. There's the surge. Right click is in. Old 11 will die to Somnus. Bushwhack wasn't enough to save him, and this Lena rotating over and getting the first kill. Oh my gosh, she's killing everybody. Now, seriously, DY's career goes down. Well, neutral's being dropped there for the Sven. Ice Blast trying to lead, but. Go in the opposite direction, and that'll stop the attempt to try and get this kill. Two K lead though, still for Elephant. Sven leading the net worth. He's going Mask of Madness into the Echo Saber. Yeah, I don't mind that though. I think the Mask of Madness on that hero. Lots of value. Dyer's top tower is under attack. And then the Echo Saber, we've seen this a lot from Magnus' this event as well. You can always disassemble it if you want to go for the relatively early BKB. Right. And they should take this tier one. Rotating into the tide with Ravage would be a very tough ask. Roll. Ice Blast coming in, and they've got the Clinks. Lena stunned by the Bushwhack, though. Drop down the wall. They've got Old 11 coming from the back. They hit the Laguna Blade. Poyoyo frozen over. Hook shot. Ooh, hook also on to the Ancient Apparition. Cold feet on a PYW. Yang. Gush, and he's frozen over. Poyoyo, Old 11 thinking about coming in. They've also got the help from Ori. Everybody here for the side of Vici. Sven's still sitting up towards top. He's got God Strength ready to go if he were to come over and TP in to fight. But Beachy, they back away from this exchange. Yeah, I mean, they've taken the top tier one. Sven just wants to farm up for a little while, so he's going to hold the top area of the map, right? Uh, I'd like to see them come and try and protect him with vision, at least, but... Decent fight for Vici, though. Find the, find the Lena, which is the, the biggest kill, I would say, at this point. Mm, ice Blast comes through. All 11's been caught. Great kill. FY will get the kill. Magnetize now on a PYW. They've got the cold feet. FY trying to get out of the cogs in time. Oh! Skin of his teeth. 28 health. And they get the kill on a PYW. That makes it a second for FY. Just making it out. Yeah, really Oof. nice uh, combo on the darks here, though, to begin with, right? Even before the clock shenanigans happened. The uh, AA blast flying over the top. Good pick off. Sven has this Echo Saber flying out. Ancient Apparition going Ring of, ba Ring of Basilius. I'm interested to see how. Um... Oh, Ooh. Sure. Yeah, I'm interested to see how quick this, the Klinks can farm in comparison to the Sven. Because obviously. Sven having the cleave, we should have a much better time. Farms Ancients a lot quicker and everything as well. Which the dice side don't really have the option to do. So in terms of pure efficiency, the Radiance should have, you know, more of the map to farm with being able to take Ancients quickly. Well, there was that time where Sven felt like what Luna feels like now. You don't pay attention for a couple minutes and all of a sudden Luna's top of the net worth. I mean, that hero is still like that, though, with Sven, right? It's not quite the same because Luna's an Aji hero as well. But when Mo when Sven gets this, like, Mom Echo, he farms incredibly quickly. Yeah, and he's going for that. Waves. He's going for that quick BKB as well, so expect the CV disassemble. Fly a little stack there by Super. Right 
So, if he disassembles it into the BKB and he leaves himself the Oblivion Staff, does he turn that potentially into, like, an Orchid? Because we saw that in... Uh, was it the last game? Maybe. It's not very likely. It was, he could it, just... The thing is, you can just buy the Echo Saber back again as well, which is quite yeah. nice. As we've been seeing it with the Magnus, Ice Blast only comes in and hits on a PYW. They've got the LSA. They have the damage to get the kill. The wall's down by old 11, and now they're going to leave this DK to die, potentially. Magnetized, reapplied with the urn. Ooh, it's going to be close. And that's... And, and do you see the difference, though? Like, he drops the wall on the Sven. It feels like he does absolutely nothing. Right. But like, he still just chunks through. And look, all of a sudden, look how far behind the Darks and the DK are in net worth. They take like two bad fights, and that's it. The Sven's just away. Radiance Middle Tower has been denied. This tide hasn't been touched all game. Are they slow? Hmm? No. Ooh, Deso on the clinks, though. I mean, this this Deso does mean that when Sven doesn't have Warcry up, like, this Sven does take a huge amount of damage from the clinks. He's not a naturally high armor hero because of being, uh, you know, strength and not agi. DY's got the Tinker Ward this time around. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Mm, gonna spot the ward. Eventually gonna spot DY. Roll misses. Stormhammer is there. And they've got the Ice Blast coming in to get this kill. Somnus gets credit for it. Well done there by Elephant. Yeah, heads up Aware players, of that ward too. Yeah. There's been a few moments like that in this tournament actually. You kind of like, oh, that's, that's actually quite impressive. You know? Yeah. I say that about everything. <laughs> My problem is, in... past the laning stage, right? The, this Dark State obviously has a really good time with the clock in the lane, but past the laning stage, he kind of wants this other melee core to play with. And they have this DK, which is alright, but it feels like if a Dark State and DK play together, they don't really have the damage to be able to pick people off between them. Mm -hmm. Whereas, you know, we used to see things like, you know, Sven Darks here, or Ember Darks here, Void Spirit Darks here. FY caught, hookshot used. Or you getting killed for that one. Like, it feels like everything has to go through PYW on the clockwork. There's the BKB. And he's gonna just buy back into the uh, Echo Saber, by the way. So he's gonna commit to it, because he's got it queued up again. Yeah, that's all right. I think that's really good. Like, you want the BKB to allow you to hit your timing quicker, then you can yeah, just go back for it again. What does the Lena have right now? Boots of travel going into BKB. Yeah, and it's this double BKB timing on the two cores, right? Between the Sven and the Lena. They're going to be incredibly difficult to deal with. Deep ward placed by DY. It's a nice one. Might, might catch a smoke or two. Right now, just moving in unison to try and get some vision off the map. Only finding that sentry and little place in obs of their own. I think you're looking for a pick off, but. The mid tier ones obviously massive here. It makes their smoke connecting their smokes really awkward because like they can't move across the map here, right through the mid lane. Great scan by the dire as well. They see this coming in. Like, do you see what I mean? You can't really move across to the top side of the map because the tier one's still up. Right. They're like stuck in this really awkward position. <laughs> They're gonna go and try for it. Ooh, Grove Bow. Perfect pick up there for the oh, Clinks if he wants to keep it. Right now oh. he's holding on to the Quicksilver Amulet. Oh, okay. Yeah, he'll switch it over to the Grove Bow. He'll get the Tier 1 Tower mid, so that'll open up some space for the side of Elephant around the map. 
they haven't been able to take advantage of the last few minutes or so, and that's where Vici have been farming their way back into the game. They've got Clinks just behind these two cores on the side of Elephant. However, I say that, roll in with the Geomagnetic Grip and the Boulder Smash. PYW is in trouble, they'll roll into him again, and they'll get the kill. You are most welcome. And there's the Echo Saber repurchased. DY is just kind of, if you look at his, obviously you can't look at his heat map. It's not something that exists. <laughs> but production. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying, like, if you visualize his heat map, he spent a lot of time bottom. And a lot of time farming on his own, pushing out that lane. Production, where's our heat maps? Sorry. <laughs> now you're making me feel bad. I didn't mean it like that. I meant like it's not in the game as a base thing yeah 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 that's what they all say you're really trying to get production man me day three <laughs> yeah you should be lucky it's not day one you tried though i remember no, no, no. i hate that tide thing the new item by the way the eye looks so stupid you don't like the kraken eye absolutely not no very uh the eye feels very hp lovecraft mm -hmm. um i'm really surprised elephant haven't tried to make the most of this uh, bkb timing more it feels like they're allowing um obviously they don't know what the item timings and everything are but vici have kind of getting their own bkbs now as well yeah so they've missed this window in the game where they're much stronger because they have theirs and the other side don't. Um, yeah, nice to see Summoner's going to MKB as well. Something I was going to mention earlier, the Clinks obviously with Strafe, really good against Alina because you get six, uh, six seconds of 100% uh, evasion from ranged attacks, right? Um, but with the MKB, it means Alina can actually click the Clinks back as well. And now it feels like they're waiting for those timings. Uh, they hit their timings on the BKBs, but they didn't take advantage of them, and so they're going to try and do a different timing where they get MKB and Blink Dagger on the spin. Yeah. Uh, Strafe is just such a good ability for against these, like, clicky range cores. Going four staff on the Ancient Apparition. He's about to hit level 12. You've got the Spear Vessel with four charges on it for the Earth Spirit of F-Fly. With that ghost scepter. Radiant are scanning. Uh, so they're smoked up. They're ready. This could be really bad for Elephant. This might even up the game if Vici come out ahead. Yeah, they see the clinks under the ward in the sentry, though. They're, and they'll, they'll know that the clinks isn't by himself, right? And there, the, the vision taken away. So that's the thing, like, you take away this vision, but you've just lost out on that smoke, so how does both team go about, both teams go about making their next move, and Vici will just go from the bottom of the map to push in the tier two. Yeah, they just connect with their Dark who was pushing out the bot lane. Oh my Ooh, goodness. Oh, it's on the damage on a PYW. They get the kill out of the coffers. They're going to roll in and find themselves the Dark Seer, the Jim Magnetic Grip, as well as the Boulder Smash that hits onto the Dark Dragon Knight in the back lines. Darkseer BKB throws down the wall and runs. I mean, not a huge amount of action though. Everybody clicks their BKB, clockwork dies. You know? Looks like the story the of this game fight. a little bit. But now wall's on cooldown. Yeah, but so's God's strength. They're still looking for bottom. <laughs> I don't know if Yang's the one they really want to go in on, though. Yeah. <laughs> they just, Yang just... I don't think he saw him walk past. He was probably looking at something else with his camera. I just imagine this giant man just, like, watching his squirrel run past his feet. 
Oh, it's adorable. Can we keep it? Just like flick it away off the end of his foot, you know. Bushwhack again, but the roll comes out from FY. Boulder smash back for the Blink Dragon Tail coming in. They've got the Geomagnetic Grip. They're getting the silence out onto the DK. The hook shot comes from PYW. This is a kill onto the Earth Spirit, but is it going to be enough for them to really commit to this one? They still don't have the wall. Ori on the run. Ice Blast leading him, but it's not going to be led the right way. Ravage out. All of them pops the BKB again. That was used earlier in the last fight. They get the kill there on Ori. They've bought back on FY, old 11 on the run, but here comes FY just buying back Geomagnetic Grip, but he does get the surge off. Boulder Smash, it's on to Poyoyo. He's looking for an opening. He's going to go in and assign this with the BKB is the damage there. One more shot was needed, and he can't find it. Old 11, he ends up dead. They're going to try and stick with Poyoyo. They've got the dust, and FY still moving forward. Good cogs. And now, actually, FY is all by his lones himself. Under by the Tier 2 tower. Here comes the Hoodwink, who will TP in. FY spotted DY, and will DY through the Bushwhack, and the Acorn shot oh, no. whiffed on both. They get the kill onto this Hoodwink. They find themselves a fourth, technically, because they already had killed the Hoodwink, and now they back for the Tier 1 bottom. I mean, that fight goes off for so long, the God Strength just comes up back again. You know, back up again, sorry. Money to burn. And there's the MKB finish. Yeah, it feels so good, like, uh... The amulet as well. It's the neutral item on the Lena. Really unfortunate for the clicks that couldn't quite kill the Lena, but I, I don't know whose four staff it was that saved the Lena, but that was really clutch. It was the uh, ancient apparitions. Yeah, and then she just goes and picks up a regen rune in the bot side and just comes back to the fight again, you know? It's uh, yeah, very fortunate for Elephant, but well played at the same time. I think that this AC on the Sven's going to be big too. You know, we talked about how when you're playing up against this clinks with the raw physical damage. If you don't have war crap, it's a bit of a worry, but the AC kind of helps you a little bit, right? Right. Also, great Ravage connecting just as the DKB, uh, DKBKB ended. That's a bit of a mouthful, isn't it? <laughs> DKBKB? Yeah. Are you going to buy the movie on the HD DVD? <laughs> oh, nice last coming in. They find themselves Poyoyo. They'll get the kill with the Laguna Blade. They're going to roll over and focus their attention onto the DK, who's able to blink away with the BKB being used, but about to run out. Bushwhack on the two. And FY going to continue to move with him. There's another roll. Ori, he has a TP in two seconds. Hasn't used it just yet. Blinks down low, and he'll find an escape. Yeah, DY is just going to try and cut the wave here when it comes. Oh, I don't think they saw the Hoodwink. That was close. The wording here on bottom is made for the aggressiveness of DY bottom. Radiance They've been spending a lot of their time here, too. He's going jetpack on PYW. That's interesting. On the clockwork. That's like a second item. He's got it coming out in the courier now. That's bizarre. Is something like four staff not really valuable this game? Am I, am I missing something? Hmm. We'll see. Maybe. I've never really looked at this jetpack properly though, and we've seen it quite a few times this tournament, so maybe I'm missing out on something. It is 20% bonus movement. Yeah, but the turning circle is really bad as well. Blink on Dark set. And they're going to go into Roche with God Strength. Now, if there's any time to have a Blink reveal on a Dark Seer. He's surging. He's trying to get there. Oh, vacuum into the wall with the BKBs being popping around the horn on the side of the Radiant. Spam getting low. They get the kill on the Urus. And the Aegis is picked up by Somnus and immediately used by this Lena. They've got Ravage, they'll throw it out, but Yang's dead. Everything falling apart for the side of Elephant. They got the kill, though, onto this Hoodwink, and they'll take out Somnus a second time. That is not good for Elephant, but that's the debut power of the Blink Dagger on Darkseer. Well, he didn't even use it. He didn't. It was coming on the Courier. He just surged in. That was Still bizarre. the power of the Blink Dagger. Like the, fact, the thought process. This is what we saw in the IG game earlier. Like, someone just like runs into the pit and just casts a spell. Like, 
Great hookshot by PYW as well. That's Sven. That's what we're saying. He doesn't have war crap. He just dies to the clinks. Like, so quickly. None of the armor up available yet. And they're back in the game now. Yeah, Ravage very late. Didn't really do anything. And I've got Ags on the DK too. What do you think's missing from this elephant lineup? Was it just that they committed to the Roche and they were in this vulnerable position, or is it more so Vici starting to really pick things up? I mean, if you have three cores just standing in the pit together, right? I feel like it's a bit of a disaster waiting to happen. If the Tide Hunter's there, kind of outside the pit and breaks the smoke, then maybe Elephant can react a little bit quicker. Ooh, Poyoyo, Ice Blast comes in. And the hook shot is there. Is he going to lose He's... his first life? I don't think so. No. Very close. What yeah, a surviving. Save. That's twice in a row the PYW's come to, you know, bail him out. Bail him out the first time on the Roche and then the second time saving the Aegis. Yeah, almost dying for the second time this game. And they know that God's strength is going to be down here, so they want to try and make a play. Not a massively long cooldown, Smoke but still significant. Smoke move. Uh-oh. Radiant Couriers. Oh, that was... He didn't have it any It could be a it. feeding frenzy. Oh, dear. Oh. <laughs> Lena actually gets that courier out, and that was the only one that had items on it. It's going to finish off that Lincolns. Yeah, obviously very good against the um, against the DK. It's the big one. There's still things to worry about. You know, there's the hook shot into the cogs, into like potential bushwhacks, vacuums. Oh, speaking of hook shots. This yeah, is going to come in on the Somnus and right help out the BKB. Items. Right click is coming through on a PYW. They get the kill and now they're going to look over. This is the new Ags on this DK. He goes into the Elder Dragon form. He's going to blink forward towards this Lena and the Lincolns gets popped. That's the fresh Lincolns. And now they go in with the Magnetize. They've got the roll as well as the G Magnetic Grip. The Silence is out of the Hoodwings. They get the kill on the DY who just have buyback. Are they going to dive any further for this or just move back? I already know they used the BKB on this DK, so hard to catch up though. What a sick like, series of events from Elephant. The, the clockwork came in with the hookshot, came around the back to try and use the cogs, but FY got the silence off before the cogs came down. So there was just no oh. follow-up. They, they found him. Ice Blast, DK, Ravage! It's a Dark Seer! LSA to follow it up. That's going to be two more. Oh, no. Elephant close the gap, and they're going to threaten the high ground. And say goodbye to your buildings. Oh, they need the Kree mm -hmm. Wave to come in, so they're protecting it, but... I mean, they're going high ground here. They know that there's no Darks here and no DK, right? They might have buybacks, they don't know. But the DK has no dragon fall. So, like, even if he comes back, he's not really that much of a threat. Especially when he's built this axe, second item. Look, sharp bushwhack coming through. It's going to be enough damage from Poyo. Look at Likely. And the Force Staffs are oh, just going to be in the again. wrong direction. Wow. And Yang now on the run. I think he's caught out in this situation. Hit with the Dragon Tail. Somnus looking to make something happen though with his right clicks. Ice Blast coming through. Maybe hitting on a Poyo. -yo. No, it's going to be a little bit short. They go after. They've got the Silence on the clinks. And they get the kill. They'll look for more. The Laguna Blade's thrown. They freeze over this DK who bought back. Chilling Touch LSA. They've got the lockdown. FY comes in with the roll. They're going to sun him up, silence him, and kill him off. Somnus with a double kill looking potentially another plus one. No clinks. And no DK. Oh my god, that is terrifying. Oh my god. That camera angle. <laughs> Hook shot, sharp shooter. No, oh, four staff balls. saves. Old 11 coming in. Blink vacuum into the wall. That's going to be on a three. That's going to be a lot of damage on a super with the bushwhack as well as the acorn shot. That should be able to get the kill onto the ancient apparition. But he gets an ice blast off before he dies. And now that hits on old 11. That gives an opportunity. They don't really have a lot of health to work with. He's going to pop the ghost scepter. Go to the geomagnetic grip. The silence on a two wow. will help him escape. And Tide also gets away. Vici's first mistake is assuming Sven's the position one. 
Little do they know. Yeah. She's almost got satanic on Melina as well. Jesus. But Vici have a jetpack. Yeah. So who's the real winner? The jetpack. Uh, the viewer is at home. That's true. Elephant just looks so good at the moment in their team fight coordination, and it's they they it looked the same against LGD as well. They're like radiant are scanning. They're just in the groove. Oh, they see Fy. We go after Fy, and they're gonna tie him up to this tree. With that bushwhack, Poyoyo gets the kill. NK lead right now for Elephant. Yeah, I didn't realize the DK had Dragon Form back up again when he bought back. Took me by surprise. Yeah, it's a long cooldown. I just didn't get the timings right. Because I agreed with you. Daedalus finished for the clinks. One of the best damage items this patch. Illusion. And one of the highest DPS heroes. Let's see how it does. Twenty-five to fifteen, ten k lead. Elephant without Fy for the moment. And they're probably gonna wait for him. He's been a big, important part of this team fight piece for Elephant. This rush fight is gonna be huge. Whenever it, whenever it does eventually spawn. Mm -hmm. Two minutes. Hook shot in, grabs two. Now they're gonna go to the dragon tail. They've got the wall down. Yang trying to run, but the vacuum back. Ooh, actually pulls him back into the sharpshooter that was meant for the ancient apparition. The ravage is gonna come through, and now they've got Yuris going into the god strength. The damage is gonna be enough. They'll get the kill on a PYW, Radiant's but that's all they get. Fy's back up again now as well, so they need to be a little bit careful. Sven without the beaky beat, not quite the same hero. Is that a leader level 25 I see as well? Yes, and has the extra attack range. Truly a sniper now. And you know who the true position one is, because it's always the one that carried us the, uh, carries the paladin sword. That's just, that's just the way it goes. Under I'm just thinking of, uh, yeah. it's always me wanting to make a reference, but Dwayne The Rock Johnson in the WWE. Oh, come on. You know, it doesn't matter what your name is, but it doesn't matter what position you are. That's all I just, I can see him saying it in my mind. And Yuris, what position are you? What position? It doesn't matter what position you are. I'm, I'm really sorry to just cut you off and you're... Yeah, yeah. 2000 and whatever Hold it was on. references, but. Super. Double four staff. Ooh. Ooh, Ooh good roll, good kick. Ice blast leading. Ooh. Not gonna land, but they've got the gush to get the kill on a DY. Yeah, and Roche is about to spawn as well without a hoodwink being available. So, Elephant gonna have the numbers advantage here if this fight does uh, carry on any further before the Roche spawns. Ooh, oh, Scar Sven. Interesting. Minotaur Horn. It's pretty good against the Clinks for the like the slow, right? Fifty percent, and it's decent against the DK. He's basically becoming the semi semi carry, and the Lena's becoming the carry. Yeah. He's so tanky. He's got four point one k HP. I think they head into Roche here now. Yeah, I mean, PYW is going to rocket flare it, but can Elephant find anybody? <laughs> They're taking the outpost right next to PYW. I mean, do they really want to push into that area where there might be vision? Yeah, they're going to get rid of it.
Her drink's back up again now, though. So it is uh, five on five. Radiance top tower is under attack. back to the high ground. Beachy. Got four heroes near the pit with DK over mid. See if anybody makes the jump to try and go for this Roche. The second Roche, Aegis, Cheese, and Shard. Dyer's bottom barracks are under attack. Radiance top tower is under attack. Almost the Daedalus here for the Lena. Might want to wait for that. Not too far away from the gold needed, but you know that it feels like a clash is going to come in just a second. Elephant are posturing near the pit, and Vici know this. They want to make a move to make sure that Elephant don't get their hands on the Aegis. They did get it last time on Somnus, but he was killed off immediately. LSA, they need to block the rocket, and as well as this hook shot. Jetpack, we're going to go in. Stormhammer in time. And they're going to have the sharpshooter. That's the break onto the Tidehunter. They'll pick up the Aegis into the hands of Somnus. They'll give the shard over to Sven. No have now that? the dispel on the Stormhammer. Yeah, I was going to say, I was pretty sure that's what it was. And there's the Daedalus picked up for the Lena. She can't even use it at the moment. <laughs> she doesn't have a slot. Yeah. Is there anything you would replace, or do you just wait to die with that Aegis? No, uh, you just wait to die, I think. She has the MKB for damage anyway, right, already. So it's not, you know, not crazy. The two lives are obviously going to be much more valuable. And you could potentially get rid of the Lincolns, but I don't think it's it's worth it. Oh, she swats out the BOTs for a second. Okay, that makes sense. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Oh, my Still God. Still moving at 406. Dyer's Look at that. That's ridiculous. They're going to try and make a move. Normal punch. And there's the wall. They've got the vacuum as well as the dragon tail. But oh, oh my satanic. goodness. Turn around with the BKB and the damage on the old 11 is going to be really felt. Poyo trying to run the hook shot comes in. They've got the roll coming up from FY as well as the BKB being bought by Yuris. Ice Blast leading. Hits on a Poyoyo. He's in trouble. The roll in from FY. He's in deep. He'll get the kill on to Poyoyo. He'll take out the Clinks. He's dead for 90, and FY is in. He's surrounded by two heroes, but isn't even going to be enough. Eurus goes in even further. They've got the Ravage that's going to land on a two. They look over now at this DK. Or he's trying to survive, but not looking likely. However, ooh, Pushwhack, it's just a little bit late, and Somnus doesn't get hit by it, so he'll finish off this DK. Storm Hammer hook shot. All right. PYW squeezes himself in between Yang and Eurus like a hot dog okay. in a bun. And that should be... They're going probably for it. in. Stormhammer comes out. Ice Blast coming through. Jetpack up into the air once again. PYW trying to be a nuisance, but they don't really care. They've taken one tier four. They'll take the other tier four. Stormhammer once again. And down goes PYW for the second time as he just bought back. They'll call GG on Beachy and Elephant with another statement victory. Taking a 2 0 over Vici. Yeah, that was that was really well played. That was really impressive. Um, yeah, I think I know it was a long time ago. I think one of the things that I think Elephant will be uh, sorry, Vici will be really frustrated about.